Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm the Dome. Today we're going to do brake upgrade on the WRX. Uh, we're going to take the stock brakes out. We're going to put in a set of STI Brembo's. Pretty common uh, upgrade on these cars. Pretty much bolt right in. You need a couple things, but nothing too crazy. Um, so we got the uh, Brembo calipers and stuff over here. Fronts and rears, pads. We got uh, the DBA rotors from KNS brakes for the rear that allow you to use the factory rear brake shoes and just change the rotor and a uh, set of DBA Street Series T2 fronts and in here is the bracket the adapter bracket for the um, the rear brakes to space them out big enough to fit the rotors so we'll take a look at the factory brakes right now um, I got the air struts bolted in today too so we're gonna take the caliper rotor take these off in the front and the front is basically just a bolt-in I already have the stainless steel lines here so this is a pretty straightforward easy one uh, you got to move the dust shield out of the way or trim the edge of it just so that it doesn't rub and over in the rear basically same thing uh, caliper rotor uh, the bracket obviously and then on the rear you need to put in the spacer bracket to move the rear caliper up far enough to reach the new rotor. I'll put them uh, side by side once I get them off so you can see the difference in size of everything. All right, so let me get the camera set up where you can see it in the front and we'll start there and then we'll uh, come back here. All right, we're going to start removing the front calipers. Um, so the tops, to remove the, just the slides from the bracket itself that mounts to the, to the hub, uh, this is a 14 millimeter. Let's loosen these up. These don't have too many miles on them, They're only about 3,500 or so. so. They should come apart pretty easily. He's going to pull the caliper off. I'm just going to place it right up at the top so it doesn't hold, hang down, kink the hose, pull the brake pads off. Maybe now we got to remove uh, the bracket that holds the caliper on itself. That's a 19 millimeter. Uh, if you get a short socket, you can get the top pulled out with a socket instead of using a. Uh, maybe not. You need a combination wrench from the top one because the uh, bolts from the strut are in the way. Use a 19 Use a gear wrench in this case. Get this out.
bracket off. Now to remove the rotor. Okay. So the only thing we have left to do is to take off um, the brake bleeder. I mean, uh, the way the brake lines connect. I'm going to leave that just for a minute. Tuck this away back here, just because I don't want to get brake fluid all over the place. a comparison of the size of the front rotor it's uh, obviously SCI rotor the stock WRX rotor put them here you can see just about the overall difference in diameter from one to the other and ensure increased stopping power is on here this the uh, actually the Dust shield doesn't rub on this, so that's good. Let's put the uh, Brembo brackets on here. Brembo Pretty easy, actually. You always want to put the bleeders up. Uh, that's how you can tell left from right. If you put the bleeders down, then you go to bleed them, you'll never get the air out. Brembo's are actually a lot easier to uh, change the brakes on because you don't have that two-piece design with the um, bracket and the caliper. So you just pull the pins, pull the brakes out the back, the pads out the back, the little sh uh, the shim, the spring shim, and then you put them back together. So you don't have to pull the rotor, you don't have to pull the caliper off or anything to do the brakes. Again, it's a uh, 19 millimeter. I have new bleeders. I'm going to change these. These are all. These have paint on them. For when I painted these calipers. So I'm going to change those out for a fresh set. And then uh, these will be all ready to go. But that's pretty much how quick the fronts are. The rears are um, a little bit more tricky, but we'll go to them in a second. I'm just going to finish putting these together, put the pads in, swap the brake line over, and then uh, I'll bleed them a little bit later. Probably let them gravity bleed a little bit just because the calipers are dry, so it's going to take a little while for the fluid to get to them. If you gravity bleed them a little bit, at least quicker when you go through the rest. So basically,
that's a uh, how you do the front. Let me get the swap over the banjo bolt. And the, uh, fluid, the uh, brake lines, and then this will be all set. Always keep a rag around when you're, obviously when you're disconnecting any brake lines, because brake fluid is uh, not good for paint, or your hands for that matter. So you don't want to get it on anything it's not supposed to. I have new uh, banjo bolts for this. It's already. So just pull this out. Another thing about brake fluid, it's, it's very slippery. This brake fluid is newer. Uh, when I did the brakes originally, I drained the whole system and changed it out. So that's why it's not black like you see a lot of them. And this is dot four. you wipe any excess brake fluid off your hands. You don't want to touch your paint by accident, off your tools. And then uh, we'll come back and bleed that in a little bit. Let me get the rear set up. And uh, I'll actually put the pads and stuff in. I'll time lapse that and then we'll switch over to the rear. Make sure your slide's good and clean. You can wire wheel them. They're in pretty bad shape. These are actually pretty clean.
The only hard part about them is lining up the brake pads. They get a little tricky. Gotta change out those bleeders. These fronts are all done. Let me set up the rears and then uh, do those next. We're back here in the front. You gotta put the, uh, the little cotter pin in that holds these slides in place. So there's a little notch here, there's a hole in each of these slides. And one of these little cotter pins goes in there on the inside of the caliper to hold it in place so it doesn't slide out. So, you get that? I'm not sure you guys that it's got to be done. And there we go. Now it's all set. Now we're going to the rears. I'm just going to change out those bleeders quick, uh, make it easier later, and uh, we'll do the rears next. Uh, basically the same, same thing. 14 millimeter for the slides, but a 15 millimeter for the brackets instead of a 19, a little bit smaller. Again, we'll start with the slides. Alpha off. Get here out of the way. Loosen up this bracket. Bracket aside, rotor off. Try to adjust that parking weight. Okay, in the KNS kit, they give you um, new hardware to mount the brackets to. The brackets. So the bracket mounts on this side like this, and then your caliper bolts back there. So. so these are the uh, KNS branded brake for the rear. They, um, they use the factory 
rear brake drum on the inside for the plug and brake. You can see the difference in sizes. Quite different on the rears, even more so than the fronts. Uh, and these are vented rotors where the stock ones are solid. They also make a, you can also do it, they make a bigger set of shoes so that the, you can use a set of stock STI, 04 STI rear brake rotors and then the, uh, the, the, pad, the uh, wear material on the shoes in the back is bigger so that it'll contact it. These, they actually make the inside smaller than the stock STI one so that it meets in with the WRX version. And once I'm done, I'll have to go in there and adjust the uh, parking brake so that it actually contacts the inside of this. But let's move this out of the way for right now so it makes it a little bit easier to see the hardware. These are Allen keys, so we're going to have to go and get the appropriate one in my toolbox. idea is that this goes in here so you get that extra space for the rotor. Let me just get the right size Allen key and we'll tighten that off. They give you new uh, hardware to mount the caliper also, so it's a nice, nice kit, comes with a good set of bolts, nice grade 8 black. Like I said, they give you new mounting bolts for the caliper and new mounting bolts for the bracket. For the other side, this is a 8mm Allen key. Alper in there. Again, slide the pads and the clips in. Slide 
slides and pins. And then I'm gonna again swap over the brake line. And I got again new banjo bolts. And I just realized that this is the wrong side. So we're gonna swap this for the correct one, because this is the passenger side brake. Because the brake bleeders are facing down. Hey, if we didn't make mistakes. How would we learn? So we'll just pop this one off. So let's I usually try and start at the top slide. I think these uh, holes got a little paint in them. Might need to give these a little bit of a tap to get them in. If not, I might have to take them off and drill them out. I can't get it to wiggle in. That feels like it's going. had these brakes on my Forester uh, only for about a thousand miles. So that's why I'm reusing the pads and stuff. I really didn't use them. Turn it so that we can get the cotter pin in. Which I will put it in so that I don't use that one. out of the way. So we gotta put these spring clips on here. Put it this way. It's been a while since I did these, so I might have that better. Oh no, I had it right. Never hurts to check.
That's done. I'll swap the brake line over and then uh, I'll change out these bleeders. I'll do the other side and then uh, I'll come back and I'll bleed them. I'll show you guys how I bleed them. I have a vacuum bleeder, so we'll do it with that. Be right back. Hey guys. All right, so brakes are all done. Calipers, rotors, pads, everything's in. Um, so I bled. When you bleed brakes, you always go from the furthest one first. So the passenger rear I did first, and the driver rear, you know, and then the passenger front. Now I'm going to do driver front, which is the easiest one for me to show you how to use. How to do? Uh, I use one of these like one man bleeders, vacuum bleeders. The uh, this little rubber tip goes on the bleeder screw. Uh, you pull the trigger, air comes out here. As the air goes by, it blows, it creates suction on the hose and pulls the brake fluid through the bleeder and into the reservoir. So you pull the air out with it. I've had the ones that go on top and pressurize it, and push it through. This seems to be a little bit easier, a little less messy, um, you know, on the whole. So make sure that your brake master cylinder reservoir is full because you're gonna, you don't want to pull it empty and then start pulling air through there. You just have to start all over again. So let's go down over here, and I'll show you how to do it. So obviously you need a wrench to crack your bleeders open. Take the, uh, the end of that, pop it right on the top of the bleeder, the hose on the inlet side here, and you squeeze. You hear the air come out, that's creating the suction in the hose. And then you just open, crack open the bleeder, and you'll see it'll sputter a little air. You can actually kind of feel it in your fingers. Close it up. See the inner one. Same thing, a bunch of bubbles, and then you pretty much go away, close up the bleeder. I usually like to come back and do this one again. Make sure you're pulling all that air out. You don't want to open the bleeder too much because you'll start to get air in through the threads. And you can kind of feel it if you do. That's pretty much how you do it. Um, so these are all bled. Once this is back, once this is back on the road, I'll uh, take it for a drive, and then I'll bleed them again. A lot of the times, just driving the car around, shaking it, you get a little couple bubbles in there that'll work their way out, and you'll be all done. So that'll wrap it up for this episode, or vlog, whatever you want to call it. Next, uh, next one, I'll probably start putting the interior back together. Uh, I'm going to run the power cables and stuff first so that I can put the carpet back in, all the panels back in, and then I'm gonna start working on the trunk. Um, the hood, fenders, bumpers, the wing, they're all at the body shop, so they should be done soon. Uh, I still have to polish the rest of the car. We polished out, wet sanded and polished the pillars where the Plasti Dip was, uh, came out awesome. So uh, that'll be in a later video, I'll show you that stuff. And uh, that's about it. Got new headlights and stuff coming too. So, pretty much good for now. Just gotta make sure the wheels fit. I didn't test fit them. They, they're 18s, they should, they should clear the Brembo's, there should be plenty of room. And then uh, once I finish the air ride, I can put it down on the ground, make sure that it, height-wise it's okay when it's inflated, make sure that when it comes down, I'm not hitting anything that it shouldn't, and uh, she should be good to go. So, uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Subscribe, give me a like, leave a comment. Follow me on Instagram, at the dome is here, and at dome detailing. Uh, on the dome detailing page, we're gonna get into uh, fixing some of this paint up. 
and uh, that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.